Let me caress his precious bride. 
going to preach tonight if the Lord will help me. And if He's not going to help me, then I hope He sets me down right now. For it's a futile effort to try to preach without the help of the Lord. Amen. I want to preach tonight on this thought. Has God got your attention? Has God got your attention? Look with me in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 tonight. I'm going to begin reading it. Verse number 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 1. The Apostle Paul said these words. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. <clears throat> Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep. And the sleep here that he's speaking of is not a death. He's talking about not being aware of what's going on around us. Of looking at the circumstances and the signs that are all around us and not caring. Not recognizing what God's doing. Notice here he says, Therefore let us not sleep as do others. Paul lets us know here there's a group of people in his day, and there's a group of people in our day that don't recognize the times in which we live. He said, Let us not sleep as do others. But let us watch and be sober, for they that sleep sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day. He's exhorting the church here. Us who are of the day be sober. Putting on the breastplate of faith and love. And for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath. But to obtain salvation. By our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Who died for us. That whether we wake or sleep. We should live together with him. Wherefore comfort yourselves together. And edify one another. Even as also ye do. If the Lord will help me tonight. We want to preach like we said earlier on this thought. Has God. Got your attention. Would you join me in prayer tonight? Heavenly Father, it's a privilege to stand in this place tonight. The invitation being extended to us from Pastor Rose. We consider it a privilege, Lord. And we take it very, very serious. An opportunity to stand and to preach from the Word of God. I offer myself, dear Lord, tonight into your hands as your humble vessel, dear Lord, that you would use me for thy glory. That you would use this service, dear Lord, to edify the body of Christ. And dear Lord, I pray, dear Lord, for those that might be watching and might be listening that can't claim personal salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, dear Lord, that right now you would begin to deal with them. And dear Lord, that you would see an old time Holy Ghost conviction upon their heart. And dear Lord, that sometime during the remainder of this service, they would just simply call upon the name of Jesus, asking you, Lord, to wonderfully save them from their sin. Lord, if you'll do that, we'll be careful to give you praise. We'll be careful to give you glory. We'll be careful to lift up that name that's far above every name. It's the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Dear Lord, I Ask you, Lord, before I got to this place tonight, I ask you, Lord, to meet us here. And I believe, Lord, you're going to do that. You're going to meet the people of God over the media and Facebook. 
Dear Lord, if there's someone, dear Lord, that's lost and listening, dear Lord, they can, while watching over Facebook, dear Lord, they can come to know Jesus as Savior. Lord, meet us here tonight. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. What a privilege it is to even speak that name. Amen. Amen. I would remind you, Paul here talks about the times and the seasons. He had just got through writing a quite well-known, popular, and comforting verse of chapter 4 and verse number 16 where he promises that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Let us know there's coming a day when the Lord is coming back. I know that there's going to be those sitting somewhere in their living room tonight watching Facebook, watching this preacher preach tonight. Probably going to accuse me of hijacking this time of pandemic to try and scare people into getting saved. Well, I'm going to get about as harsh as I normally get. You can believe anything you want to believe. I don't know for sure how God is going to use this pandemic in His great plan. I don't know how God's going to use the, what we see going on throughout the world right now in His great plan. I don't know how it fits into it. But I know this, my God has a plan. That's right. Sure. And everything that is going on in this world we live in is working out to accomplish God's great plan. Right. And that plan is going to lead to one single great event in the future. Whether that's tonight, whether that's tomorrow, whether that's next week, whether it's next year or ten years from now. All that's going around us is part of the plan of God. Right. And part of that plan leads to one great event. Amen. Right. And it's the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus right. is coming again. Right. And I tell you, I feel like the Lord wants me to preach this tonight. And I feel like the devil doesn't want us to preach it tonight. Right. But Lord, we ask you to help us tonight to preach what you've laid on our heart. Think about the second coming of Jesus. Who's coming again? That one that was born as a babe in a manger in Bethlehem that we sing about during the Christmas season. He's coming again. Yes. That one, glory to God, that walked the shores of Galilee, that one, that open blinded eyes is coming again. Amen. That one that stepped out of a boat, stepped into a country called Gadara, and is met there yes. by a demoniac, amen, full of many devils, amen, and with his very word delivered that man and set him free. That Jesus is coming again. Amen. Glory to God. The Jesus, amen, that stood there at the tomb of Lazarus and wept. Amen. And walked over to the tomb of Lazarus and cried, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead, amen, got up out of the grave and walked forth, amen, and was set free from death itself. That Jesus amen. is coming again. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. The Jesus, amen, that she sung about tonight, that stretched his arms open wide on an old rugged cross, amen, and laid down his life for the sins of humanity. That Jesus is coming again. Amen. Amen. The Jesus, amen, that laid in the grave three days. Glory to God. But on that third, amen, and glorious morning, amen, he walked out of the grave victorious over death, hell, and the grave. That Jesus amen. is coming again. Amen to Jesus. Amen that while they're standing there on a Judean hillside. Amen. And disciples are all gathered around him. Amen. And the, listen, the force of gravity had no hold on him. And he leaves this earth and he ascends up to his Father in heaven. And he's encompassed by the clouds of glory. Amen. That Jesus is coming again. Amen. Whether you believe it or where I believe it makes no difference, will not hinder it one bit, that Jesus is coming again. Right. Now here's where this preacher wants to get a little serious tonight. We live in a day when the preacher can proclaim this simple message, get ready, Jesus is coming again, and both the church and unchurch will shrug their shoulders. Right. 
Right, oh, Lord, help us, preacher. Oh. Help us, Lord. Now, we've got three or four preachers sitting here tonight. Now, y'all sit me down if I get out of the Word of God tonight. We live in a day when the preacher can preach Jesus is coming again and both the saved and the sinner will shrug their shoulders and say, what's the big deal? We live in that day. Listen, signs are all around us that warn of His coming. Now, I believe the Lord sends these signs because it portrays His heart for lost humanity. Signs are orchestrated by a sovereign and providential God. You say, well, why would God send signs? It's because the heart of God says that He loves lost humanity. We know that Peter said this in 2 Peter chapter 3. Amen. There we know that there was a group of people. Amen. Peter warns us about it, that in the last days they would be scoffers. They would be people coming who would ask this question, where is the promise of His coming? But Peter went on to say this, amen, that the Lord is not slack or delayed, amen, His coming or His promise as some men count slackness. He said, but He is long-suffering to us. Right. Amen, He's long-suffering to us. Right. Amen, who's us? Word? That's lost humanity. Right. Amen, God's long-suffering to us. Word. Right. He's a compassionate God. And if He doesn't come today, it's because He loves us. Amen. And if He doesn't come tomorrow, it's because He loves us. And He doesn't, listen, He's not willing that any should perish. Amen. But no. that all should come to repentance. Yes, Is that sir. not the Word of God? That's right. Amen. Let me say this, God in His mercy, we see in Scripture warns before He pours out His wrath. He warned a generation in Noah's day. The Bible lets us know that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Yes, right. If I understand Scripture right, I believe Scripture implies that Noah was a building the art and preaching for over 120 years. And he preached to a generation of people, amen, and it would appear that he won no converts. But yet, God warned through Noah, a righteous man, that God was going to destroy this old world. We know that to the city of Nineveh, God sent a man by the name of Jonah. Go and preach to, go and preach to the Ninevites. Yeah. We know that Jonah, amen, decided that that wasn't the plan he wanted to follow, and he found himself in the belly of a whale. Listen, when you disobey God, you'll always find yourself in the belly of some type of whale. Yep. But God sent Jonah to give the Ninevites an opportunity to repent. And we find out that over a hundred years later, God raises up a prophet by the name of Nahum and sends him to the exact same city. To, and he cried aloud against them that judgment is coming because of their iniquity and their wickedness. Right, that's right. I want to make a comment here tonight. Remember, now there's a distinction or a difference between the comings of the Lord. Let me explain. But the first time Jesus came, he came in love. John 3, 16 says this, and we often quote it, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But the next time He comes, He'll not be coming in love, but He'll be coming in judgment. Right. We see that John there in the 19th chapter of the book of Revelation said, He said, Behold, I saw heaven open and a white horse, and he that sat upon the horse was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness, he said, he does judge and make war. Amen. We know, amen, that he, um, a sharp sword will proceed out of his mouth. And with it, that he should smite the nations and smite his enemies. The next time he comes, it will not be in love. I know those people want to turn me off right now because they only want to hear about a Jesus who loves. Yes, He loves, but He's the Jesus who has been given the judgment of all things. Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen. With all we see going around us today, I can't help but think that God is trying to get somebody's attention. Somebody said, yeah, the world needs to sit up and take notice. I want to say the world needs to sit up and take notice, but the church needs to sit yes, up sir. and take notice. That's right. 
You say, why is that? Because the church is afflicted with the same disease, amen, that afflicted Old Testament Israel. They were hot one year and they were cold the next. And then they found themselves in a lukewarm condition. They had been serving God with their mouth, but their heart was far from Him. And I can't help but think that's the disease that has stricken the modern day church. We're serving God with our lips, but our heart is far from Him. And all we see going around us is God's warning trying to get our attention. Anybody? Help me, let me read to you a passage of scripture. You can turn there with me. It's in Romans chapter number 13. Romans chapter number 13. You'll see this exact same Paul who talk, talked about the signs and the seasons of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and warned people to recognize the times and not to sleep as others, not to be uh, drunken as others, but to be sober and to be aware of what God is doing in His present age. Notice what He says in Romans chapter 13 and verse number 11. He said in that knowing the time, the time, notice that, the time. He said knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. He warned the church at Thessalonica, don't you be caught sleeping. He said and he tells the church at Rome, hey man, it's time to awaken ourselves. And he said, for now, whoo, glory to God now, hey man, now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Paul hey, believed, hey man, that the coming of the Lord was nigh at the door over 1,900 years ago. Hey, and then here 1,900 years later, he's near today than he was then. Our salvation is nigh at the door. Yeah. But so many people God doesn't have their attention yet. Right. Did you hear? For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Let me say this. I think what we see going on in our world today, quite possibly, I'm not a prophet, not a seer, not a predictor of the future, and that God has not given me any side, any inside information. But I can't help but think that possibly what is going on around us, God is just simply trying to get the world's attention. I find it interesting that it took the smallest of God's creatures. Come on. The smallest of God's creatures to turn the world upside down. That's right. Yeah. Is that not right? Yeah. Amen. It's good. What God can do. I believe, amen, God warns to the preacher today. But let me say this. People no longer listen to the preacher. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You're exactly right. Death, we preach to deaf ears today. So I believe God in His mercy gives us the signs of the time. Amen. I want to give you three signs tonight that I believe God's trying to get our attention. First of all, there's the signs that we see in nature. Nature. Matthew chapter number 24, we find that Jesus gave this response to a question that the disciples had. The disciples had a question. Tell us what are the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. Jesus would go on in Matthew 24 to let them know you're to watch for earthquakes, you're to watch for pestilences, we're to watch for famines. But Jesus made an interesting statement. He said these are about the beginning. I'll tell you about that. Now, that's, that's humbling. Yeah, amen. Listen, God is trying to get somebody's attention. Amen. These are but the beginning of sorrows. Many people find it hard to believe that God speaks through nature, but consider there was a day way back in the book of Genesis, God looked down on the hearts of men, and He saw that men's hearts was given over to nothing but evil. Amen. And He sent a flood, amen, to destroy man off the face of the earth. You say, well, what was God saying when He sent the flood? It was God's way of saying, I've had enough. Right. I, 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 that may not be a good theological way of putting it, Brother Vince, uh, but that's how I understand it, amen. Yes, God sir. said, I've had enough. Right. And He answered man by nature. Amen. He controls us the very forces of nature. I've been reading for the last two weeks out of the book of Amos. I find it interesting that Amos, God raises up Amos 
to plead with the children of Israel to repent and to turn to God. And if they don't return to God, amen, there's going to be destruction. And here God reminds him in the book of Amos these things. Now listen to this right here. Listen to this. Please don't tune this preacher out. Because, listen, please, I want to beg you, don't tune out the Word of God. Through Amos, God was called His people back to Himself. And this is how God worded it. He reminded them there in the book of Amos, I am the God that formed the mountains. It's interesting that in Amos chapter number 4, God through Amos tells, I mean, he, he cuts right through it, so to speak, and he says, prepare to meet thy God, he says. God said this to the prophet Amos. He said, I sent a wind your way, but it didn't get your attention. No, none of you have returned to serve me. He said your crops grew up and he said I sent a palmer worm to devour your crops. He said but still you would not return to me. He said I sent drought. I withheld the rain but still you wouldn't return to me. Help us Lord. God said I sent famine. He meant you went hungry but he said still you wouldn't return to me. He said I sent pestilence but still you wouldn't return to me. Listen God was trying to get their attention but nobody would listen. Right. You say, well, that's Old Testament. I tell you, there's another day God used nature to get somebody's attention. We see that our Savior was hanging on an old rugged cross. And about the time he's getting ready to cry, it is finished and give up the ghost. The Bible lets us know for a period of three hours they were garnished and covered. Right. And the earth began to quake and the rocks were written to. God was trying to get somebody's attention. Right there's right. my son. Listen, we better pay attention. God's trying to get our attention. Some people won't agree with what I'm getting ready to say, but I'm going to go ahead and preach it. I've got the pulpit tonight, so I'm going to go ahead and preach it. That's right. Got my good prophecy study buddy here tonight, Brother, Brother Buford. We, 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 throw, we, uh, we love to teach uh, or preach and uh, study Bible prophecy together. And uh, we, uh, hell, I believe we encourage one another in the study of the Word of God. I believe one of the signs, in fact, is God's super sign, is a little nation called Israel. Sure is. Amen. is this all right to preach this all right tonight, on, Brother Rose? Yes. Come on. <laughs> that little piece of real estate is the most contested piece of land that's ever been. Jerusalem is the most talked about city in all the world. Why is that? God's doing something in that country. It's interesting that God uses through the Lord Jesus Christ a fig tree to symbolically teach about yeah. the country of Israel, the nation of Israel. Right. Let me give you this example. We find in Matthew chapter 21, the Lord comes into the temple and there he finds the temple far from what the temple was supposed to be. Right. It was so he begins to turn over the money changers' tables. You know why he did that? Because he said, my house is to be a house of prayer. But he told the people, the Jews, you have made it a den of thieves. And he walks out a little ways to Bethany and spends the night. And on his way back into town, we see that he comes across a fig tree. It has leaves. It looks alive. But it has no fruit. Right. Amen. And he curses it. The only destructive miracle that Jesus does in the Gospels. He curses a fig tree and he withers away. You say, well, how do you know that's about Israel? We know that a little bit later. We get over to Matthew 24. Remember now, the disciples asked Jesus a question. Jesus, first of all, said, not one stone of this, the temple is going to be left upon one another. And the disciples said, I, well, when's this going to be? And tell us, tell us, Master, what's, a, what's going to be the sign of thy coming of the end of the world? And he begins to talk to them about false Christs and about famines and earthquakes. And then he gets down there to the end and he reminds them, learn the parable of the fig tree. 
You go back to the book of Hosea, you go back to the book of Jeremiah, you'll find out it wasn't the first time that God used the parable of the fig, amen, to compare it to the nation of Israel because the fig tree bears two types of fruit. It bears good fruit and it bears bad fruit at different times of the season. Jesus tells the disciples there in Matthew 24, he said, learn the parable of fig tree. He said, when you see its leaves shooting forth. He said, you know summer's nigh. Amen. And he let them know something's getting ready to happen and it's even nigh at the door. What God is doing in Israel, amen, lets us know, amen, that God's getting ready to step out of eternity and step into this existence once again. Amen. And he's going to invade the affairs of man. God's getting ready to do something. Right. But has God got your attention? Not only do we have the sign of Israel, we've got the signs of a sinful society. Amen. How many would agree tonight we live in a sin sick world? Right. Amen. The Bible warns, Jesus warned us in Matthew 24 that in the last days false Christ would arise. Right. We know that. Paul said in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, speaking there in chapter 2 about the day of the Lord, he let us know there would be apostasy in the church, and he used this language. He said there would be a falling away. We live in that day. We know that Paul tells young Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter number 4, and he's speaking there. If you go back and read 2 Timothy chapter 4, he's talking about the period of Jesus. He said there would be a time that will come, amen, that there would be a turning away from the truth. That's right. We live in that day. Amen. Right. We know Paul told young Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter number 4, he's speaking about latter times, latter times. He said in the latter times, he said the Spirit talked about the latter times. He said in the latter times there would be a group of people that would depart from the faith even so bad that they would follow the doctrines of devils. Right. We live in that time. That's true. Right. But I want to settle just a little bit tonight on what he told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3. I'm not going to read all of them, but he let us know that in the last days, last days, last days, listen at me now, last days, he said, perilous times will come. And he begins to list all the things that are going to be the signs of that day. And I want to focus on just a few. First of all, he said men would be lovers of their own selves. I don't even need to preach on that one. That's this generation. Right. We live in a selfish generation. Right. It's all about me, my, my rights, and what I can get, and I want mine. And if you got yours yesterday, then that's unfair. I need to get mine. Up. That's the generation in which we live. Yeah. And that's a sin that exists outside the church, and that's a sin that exists inside the church. Right. God help us. Amen. Then he said there would be a generation of people in the last days that would be disobedient to parents. And then he made this statement. There'd be a generation of people in the last days without natural affection. That's right. Come on, bro. And I'm getting ready to get politically incorrect. Come on. Come on, but I'd rather be biblically correct yes, sir. than to be politically correct. Amen. And it is never, people that know me know that it's never my intention to hurt people's feelings. But sometimes you gotta just tell the truth. Without natural affection, let me say this, there are two great sins in my lifetime that I observed that I think fit into the category of without natural affection. Number one is this, abortion. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Abortion. It is unnatural yes, for a mother to want to kill her baby. It's unnatural. Right. right. My heart goes out to, to that, that woman, sure that, that young lady that might be struggling. I understand that. I, 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 don't, I don't understand what she's walking through, but I, listen, I, I know my heart goes out to somebody like that. But yet, that doesn't negate the fact that it's unnatural for a mother to want to kill her unborn child. Right. But yet, in this country alone, since 1973, we have aborted, murdered, killed, slaughtered over 50 
million unborn babies. Lord help us. That's right. I want to say this. This nature will not escape the judgment of God. That's exactly right. The second great sin that fits into this category without natural affection is the sin of homosexuality. Right. Can I get an amen from anybody here? Amen. Amen. That's right. Homosexuality is being, listen, it's been with us way back in the Old Testament in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's not a new sin. The difference is, is that they were shamed with it then. Today it's been glorified right. like never before. And sadly, we even got whole Christian denominations right. that have actually had it come to a vote about whether to allow open practicing homosexuals into the ministry. Let me say this, a practicing homosexual has no business teaching Sunday school. Amen. Come on now. Yes. Has no business being on the deacon board. Right. And they certainly should never be granted the privilege of standing, hey amen, in the pulpit to preach the word of God. I Can right. I get an amen? amen? And then it got worse. All of a sudden we live in a generation where people can't figure out whether they're a boy or they're a girl. There is a darkness that has settled over this world. Somebody better pay attention. That's right, preacher. Come on. Now I know there'll be those out there that'll say, now, boy, that preacher is a little harsh. Come on. He, he's wrong because he, he's hurting people's feelings tonight. Well, Paul, Paul covered you too. Yeah. He said that in the last days there would be a group of people that said that they would be despisers of those that are good. Yeah. Those that preach and stand for righteousness, amen, will be singled out for ridicule. Yes, right. sir. Because we live in a time where people, amen, are despisers of all that is good. Help him more. Then Paul said this. He said there'd be a generation of people that love pleasure more than love God. Listen, our society and sadly even part of the professed church is finding themselves in the gutter of iniquity. The gutter of sin right. and the gutter of sorrow. Listen, somebody better wake up. God's trying to warn us of something, and I'll tell you what it is. Jesus is coming again. That's right. Amen. The signs are all around us. Sure they are. Now I'm coming to a close right here. Just based on what we've read from the scripture tonight, what the Lord has had me to share with you, there's no way to come to any other conclusion than this. We're living very near to the Lord's return. Signs are all around us. They're shouting to us, trying to get our attention. Now, I'm going to ask you a question again. I'm going to, ask, I'm going to pull my finger at the telephone that's, that's looking at me tonight. I'm Facebook here. I'm going to say, has God got your attention? No, Lord. Let me give you this example. Come on, You'll find this in the book of Isaiah, chapter 5. God compares the nation of Israel and all that he did for them, them being a vineyard, them being a kind and compassionate husband. He said, I planted this vineyard. He said, I, 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 I built a nice wine press there for them. I built a tower in the middle of it. He said, I, I, I planted the choicest grapes. That's right. But when I came back, I didn't find the choicest grapes. He said, I found wild grapes. That's right. And God asked this question. He said, what more? What, what more could I have done? He tried and he tried and he tried. He sent pestilence. He sent rain. He sent wind. He blessed them. He prospered their crops. I mean, listen, he prospered their families. They knew times of wealth. They knew times, you know, when they barely get by. Everything God did to get their attention. God said, what more? Yeah. Could I have done I want to ask some questions tonight to those that are watching, those that are sitting to myself tonight. Amen. Are you ready? What more does God have to do Lord, come on, to get your or my attention? Amen. Let me say this. If Jesus was to come today, and I'm not saying he is, but he could. He could come today. It could be tonight. It could be tomorrow. If Jesus was to come today, would he be your wonderful Savior? Or would he be Jesus, your judge? There's only two options. True. One or the other. No middle ground. That's exactly right. 
And if you've never received His grace and mercy, now is the time to call upon His grace and mercy. If you never ask Him to save you, you need to seize the opportunity today. What else? What else does God have to do? To give your attention. To the church, let me say this. If you're a Christian tonight, are you living as if Jesus could come at any time, at any minute, at any moment? Do you just shrug your shoulders and say, Oh well. May God not find us shrugging our shoulders. May He find us watching and waiting and living for Him. The songwriter said it this way I've been watching and I've been waiting. <laughs> just any day now, His face I'll see. Right. Let's bow our heads and pray tonight. Once again, has God got your attention? The more to pray, Brother Rose will come and close this out tonight. Heavenly Father, I hope I can say here tonight that you've got my attention. But I've been guilty. I'm not high and mighty and super spiritual. I've been guilty, Lord. I'm getting so caught up in myself. So caught up in living life, trying to make a living, trying to please myself, do my own thing, I forget about God. Lord, in your great mercy, and your great compassion, you, you, you've sent a world so many signs. Someday, Lord, you'll send the last sign and you'll come again. If you was to come tonight, Lord, would you Sadly, Lord, I believe you'd find many in this world just shrugging their shoulders, going on about their life. No big deal. I've heard it before. It's no big deal. This virus is no big deal. The sin that's in our world, no big deal. The coldness, the selfishness in our world, no big deal. The earthquakes, the wars, no big deal. What God's doing in the Middle East, our Israel, no big deal. Lord, what other country was dispersed to the four corners of the earth? And after 1,900 years, they were born again in a day. No, they, they don't believe you today, Lord. They've come back to the land in unbelief. But there's coming a day, Lord, you're going to do a work in that nation. What you're doing there now serves as a sign for the rest of the world. You're getting ready to come again. But are we part of that group that Paul talked about that's sleeping, that's drunk, it's not aware of what's going on around us. God, let us not be part of that crowd, but let us be part of the crowd that's aware that we serve a compassionate God, so compassionate that He sent sign after sign trying to get our attention. Let us know we need to be watching, we need to be waiting, we need to be ready. Jesus is soon to come. Lord, it's the great hope of my soul. When my life comes to an end, when my life comes to an end, I'll gaze upon the face of my Savior. And Lord, if you was to come tonight, I want to be found watching. I want to be found waiting for the coming of the Lord. God forbid that we could be part of that crowd that just strokes their shoulders and says, I'll turn my attention somewhere else. God forgive us and God help us. In Jesus' precious name I pray tonight. Amen. Amen. Listen, we can close it and go on. Listen, you couldn't hear it said any better. You're not breaking Brother Wayne, you know that. I'm thankful he obeyed God tonight. Amen. He could have very easily come up here and preach something that was loving and caring. Uh, that, that we think is loving and caring. Can I tell you this? He's not preaching anything more loving Amen. and more caring Amen. than what he just preached to you and I tonight. I want to share a couple of verses with you because right here is what we're guilty of. Has he got our attention yet? He does things that the brother means to get our attention, to get us to where he yes. wants us to be. Yes. I've been through it, Brother Wayne. 
I've been through things in my life that he did things in my life to get my attention. Let me give you this verse. Psalm 78 verse 35 says this. And they remembered that God was their rock and the high God their redeemer. Yes. Sounds great, doesn't it? Man, it sounds wonderful that Israel remembered what God had done for them. There's another verse. Verse 36 says this, Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth. They gave lip service. There was never a change in the heart. They did flatter him with their mouth, and they lied unto him with their tongues. If we're not careful in this time that we live in today, we'll say, God, you got our attention. Now, God, you're working in my heart. God, you're doing something in my life. We'll flatter him for just a little while. Yeah. And then we'll turn back something. That's right. You go on down in that chapter to verse number 41, and it says this. Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. That's, right. That's what our country has done today. We go through spells. We go through trials. We go through difficulties. Our churches go through spells. They go through trials. They go through difficulties. They say, God, if you'll just get us through this one more time, God will, will serve you. God will go and we'll, we'll do more missions work. We'll do more witnessing. We'll do more soul winning. He gets us through that time. He gets us through that trial. He gets us through that struggle. But all it was was lip service. That's right. And we've limited what God wants to do in our lives, in our yes. churches, and in our country. Oh, yes. Lord help us. Has He got our attention yet? Listen, there's a much bigger virus in this world going around than the coronavirus than I, Brother Wayne. It's called sin. I preached a message on that when this whole thing started. There's a greater virus in this world, and it's called sin tonight. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Brother Wayne, for the message. I, I say every time I'm going to be up there to add anything to it, but I want to be obedient to God. He lay those verses on our heart, we're going to share them. Amen. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. So it's been a blessing, yeah. Man, every night's been a blessing. God bless. Listen, I, I hope you felt it on Facebook the way we felt it in the building. Amen. There may be only nine of us sitting down here tonight, um, but God's good. That's right. He moved, right? I'm thankful for it. Well, another wonderful night. God's working. I'm telling you, God's got something big Amen. playing for us. We better not flatter him with our mouths. Amen? Amen. It better be a change of heart. It better be a change of heart. He got our attention. Hope he got your attention tonight. So listen, I hope he's got your attention tonight. Amen? Amen. God's been good. Tune in tomorrow night, um, 7 o'clock. Brother Randy McMillian will be with us. And I'm looking forward to preaching in the morning. Amen. To our Matter and Atha family, tune in 11 o'clock in the morning. Looking forward to preaching in the morning. And uh, I, I believe in the morning you'll see how God's been working through this whole thing. How God's lined up messages. Listen, I'm, I'm telling you, you go back to last uh, Sunday and how God has lined up the messages just in line perfectly Amen. with what we need for today. God's good. God's good. And I'm thankful for that tonight. Well, let's do this. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. We'll be dismissed. God, we love you tonight. God, you've been so good to us and blessed us beyond measure. Lord, more than we could ever imagine, more than we could ever deserve, God, you've blessed us as a church, as a people, as a nation. God, you've blessed us. Lord, I want to thank you for it. Lord, help us during this time to realize, uh, Lord, that you're trying to do something in our lives and that we need to allow you to do that in our lives. Now, God, I pray tonight if there's one watching tonight or, or listening tonight that doesn't know you as their Savior, God, I pray that something was said tonight to get their attention to realize their time's running out. Uh, there is a day and a time that, Lord, they'll, that they'll no longer have that chance. God, would you work in that heart tonight, I pray. Lord, we love you tonight. Thank you for what you're doing. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory for it all tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Y'all have a wonderful night tonight. We love you, and God bless you.